one. Um, we have an E46 2001 330XI that I'm going to be changing out the uh, flex disc and the center shaft bushing. The flex disc they call it the Guibo. Um, I can show you the components here. Uh, this is the flex disc we're going to be changing out and the center shaft bearing for this 330XI and here I got some exhaust flanges. Since I'm taking the exhaust off, you're going to have to get new flanges because the old ones are probably bad. And while I'm down there, I'm going to change out some components for the bushing uh, shifter. Some bushings are in there. I can show you the shifter. It's kind of really sloppy. Let's get in here real quick. Again, the owner, the previous owner, really didn't take good care of this car like they should. Um, I had to do, had to do a lot of work to get it to look in at least this, this good. But as you can see, the shift going to first. There's a lot of play in there. A lot of play. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, second, same thing. Third, same thing. It's, no matter where I go into, it's a lot of play. Fifth. Not too bad, but still more than it should be. Of course, reverse is way over here, and still a lot of play. So that shouldn't be. So we're gonna fix that too. I'll show you that. But mind you, the 330i is different than the 330xi. Different shifting components. So we'll get started on that. Then I'll let you guys know. Well, if you can notice, down here. Let's see, it's kind of strange to be hard to see. Gotta pull these bolts. It's supposed to be uh, pressed in bolts, but it looks like somebody put in other bolts. And you can tell these are not the same size. You can see it, they're not the same size. And I have a feeling that some of these are metric, some of the English. Tell you, this was English. My 16th. That fits right on there. So yeah, that needs to be taken care of. So I'm gonna shut the camera off for now. You don't want to see me take these out. Maybe a little bit of struggle. I may have to cut them out. So we'll see. Um, I'll let you know. Okay, I finally got the bolts or the nuts off. One of the um, studs broke. I'm gonna have to drill that out. I think I'm gonna drill, make them all through holes. The reason why they have studs in there because in the back of it, I believe the oxygen sensor kind of gets in the way. But um, yeah, the best thing I could do is probably drill them out and put through bolts in it, get the right length bolts. That way, I could just put a nut on the back side, not worry about it. Probably gonna go with stainless steel nuts. Um, that way, you don't know, rust, at least, and move on from there. But that's how far I've gotten. So, moving on to the next thing. Okay, took out the two bolts. Um, not two bolts, but all the bolts and nuts in the front flanges of the exhaust. I have this brace up here. You see this little brace? I'm putting it. I'm putting it right about this. Way. Show it right about in this area here. You can see this, this little joint here. That's where I'm putting this jack here. I'll take these guys out and see if um, see what happens. See if the exhaust drops a little bit. Not sure um, if it will or not. But I have the jack just in case. Don't want to hurt myself here. And also, kind of away from the exhaust. I'm just kind of off to the side. Yeah, it's a little 
lot easier than trying to get Came right out. A little more messy. A little messy when it came out. I wonder. Get off to the side. I'm sure you guys don't want to see me deep taking this out. It's kind of boring. So I'll just save some of your time and video and move on to the next thing. Off this plate, see that one back there? Just need to take off the rest of the exhaust. It's a grommet sitting in there. If you can see it or not. It's one there. It's one on the other side here. Probably gonna just slide them right out. And uh, the exhaust should come down. It's gonna be sitting on that jack way back there. Uh, the exhaust is heavy. I gotta be careful. At least I have a pivot point there. So, really should take, should have two people help you out, but it's just me right now. Okay? I'll let you know how it goes. I took the exhaust out. As you can see, you can see the bolts. Um, some were through bolts, the others were left behind. The bolts would look awful. I was gonna drill them out. But, uh, other ones in and we work our way we only have uh we have this nut to take out and i think that nut to take out and this whole thing should come down oh wait a minute so another one over here another one there and this whole thing should come down right. so that way we can see the center shaft Hopefully you can see it shields out, center shaft here, center wearing here, we're going to be replacing uh, these two components here and also the, the gear shift if we can get to it <laughs> somehow. I'm trying to see if I can see it up there but um, as you can see this already has some cracking in it here, um, it's cracked. I don't think this is what's ever been replaced. It's probably failed. So that's where we stand. So again, this is the center shaft. Um, 330XR. So that's what it looks like. Okay. Um, let me see here. Is there any play in that? If I can remember that, you can't tell if there's any play. But I'll, I'll inspect it when I take it out. So, it doesn't look too bad, but you never know. Alright, we'll continue on. Well, the saga continues. I moved, removed uh, the center components. Um, first, I took out the um, ball shifter and an Allen head screw there. Then I removed this boot here. Just pulls right out. It's got some locking tabs in it. No big deal. Pulls right out of here. And then this was sitting in here. It had two, you see them right now, two screws I pulled out. I came right out and unplugged the switches. And when I took all this stuff out, I mean, this was in there too. It's for sound deadening. And I pulled out the rubber piece that was inside of here. Just gotta, this is a little, um, <laughs> it's got an arrow on it, tells you it goes forward, but this is a little tough to get out but be patient don't use anything sharp because you'll rip it um, pull this out when I pull everything out it looks like uh, this, whoever had this car before put in the short shifter 
didn't know that. Um, put the short shifter in, but they only did a half job. They all that work you have to take all these pieces out you know to put this short shifter in they didn't replace the flex disc and other stuff that they should have done and it's kind of weird I mean why do a half job you already got it apart might as well do the, the clutch too but I'm not gonna do the clutch the clutch seems to be fine to me when I drive it so I'm not gonna bother with the clutch I'm not sure if I have, if I have to take out the transmission or not to get to all this but you can see here there's like a, a housing that's in here and it just moves a lot and I'm hoping that it's just a, a couple bushings not broken I've seen these housings break because they have like two arms that come out like this and they attach to the transmission and it has two bushings that keep them in place I'm hoping it's just the bushings that are bad if the arms bad then I'll have to either order a new um, a new part or weld that so not sure not sure so um got it this far i think i'm gonna have to drop the transmission to do all this because this is exercise are totally different and then people probably freak out oh transmission you gotta do all that it's not that bad it, it it can be done in your garage it's not not that bad so This right here, if you can see that or not, um, we'll review that in a minute. And the shaft is down. I have to take it all apart. Take the shaft entirely out. I have to take a couple, probably that uh, component there, but that'll be later. All right. Anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Hey everyone, let me just let you know what's going on here. If you can see it or not. And this camera's not in the right position. But I'll end up lowering. Let's get a brighter. brighter. Sorry about that. Um, I end up lowering, taking this brace off. I'm just come to find out that this bushing is the one that's causing the vibration. It's really, it's gone. Here's a real quick review, as you can see in this piece of paper here, if I get close enough. Um, let's see, I don't want to get out of frame. But there's two different components here. This one here is for the 330XI. This one here is for the 330i. As you can see, they're totally different. Totally different. So, I believe the 330i, you can access these components, no problem. I think the 330XI, you gotta drop the transmission. So, I'm gonna play around with it, see what happens. Um, that's why I'm making this video. There's not many videos on the 330XI as far as doing this kind of stuff. So, the way this works, this, this arm was in there and everything was put together like so uh, these you have their pins on both sides um, got these backwards pins on both sides like this As you can see in here in the diagram so everything's hooked up 
like this. I took it all apart. I forgot I didn't want to do a video of just me taking things apart. It seems kind of boring. But I can show you what I did. So, all right. First, what I did was um, I took these out. <clears throat> now you can see the one, once that transmission drops, you can see this one, which is the left hand side, driver side. All you have to do is take, um, you can see this one, all you do is take a screwdriver and flip it up. And what these engage, there's like two forks, two forks that are in on the transmission. It engages these forks and you lift that up and you kind of just pull this out like so. And you do the same thing on the other side. You lift it up, pull it out, and then this is free. <clears throat> Since that's free, you go underneath the car and then there's a locking. I don't have it with me now. It slides in here. It's a clip. slides in here and you can release the clip and then this comes out and it just sits in there because you can't get the other get to the other end you can't get the other end so it sits in there then you pull this out comes out entirely and once that's out you can push this forward because it's inside of the car you can push this forward inside the car and this will drop down and it just falls right out. You just slide it through, falls right out with that transmission is like down here. It just will slip right past it. And I come to find out what the problem is. This thing is cracked right here. So that's why it's so much play. Play in this. Besides also these rubbers are has a lot of play in them too as well. That's that shouldn't be I can replace all that. I'm hope, hopefully I'm capturing all this. Um, again this is how it's set up. So this is sitting in here and there's another capture clip that goes on here. You just have to push that out and it comes right out and pulls it. So I'm going to replace the washers in here, washers in here. I got all the new hardware for it. Um, there is this mechanism here. I don't know if you can see it get close enough. This mechanism here has a Lego a snap ring and a pin. It, that seems to be okay. I'm not sure if I'm going to do all that because that's it's hard to get to. It's, it's way up in there. If you look inside the car here, it's a giant hole here. You stick your hand in there. But you have to stick it in pretty far to get to these things. So to do this properly, I would prefer to drop the transmission. But there's no need to. Um, this seems pretty, pretty stout. I don't feel any play in it. And that's what I'm mostly concerned of. Play. And then I don't feel there's a pin that goes in there, and then this is a washer. I can show you the pin and the washer. It's, The washer looks weird. It's, this is the washer here. Goes inside. It's kind of some kind of spongy material. They call it a washer, but it's a spongy material. It's supposed to give, I guess, a little bit of pressure. Keep it out. And besides, there's a pin too. So it, that seems they don't feel any play in that. So I'm not gonna really mess with that. Um, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. That's my philosophy. So I'm going to put this all back together. Um, but again, I just hopefully I captured all this about this. Okay, one more thing I, I forgot to mention. Um, in here, you can see a pocket. You can see a pocket in there. It's like an open space with the cylinder there. It's a pocket there. Well, my recommendation is uh, try to cover that up. It's just the part of, I don't know why they leave it open like that. Um, but the casing, you have to take apart the casing. If anything falls down there, you have to take apart the casing and get to it. And then, so the best thing is just cover it up with some, like some cardboard, because you're going to be using some small washers and small clips, and more than likely they're going to fall down in there. You're not going to be able to get them out. You can try to use a magnet, but of course 
the washers they use are, are either Teflon, nylon, they're not magnetic, so you're going to lose them. So, just, just a tech tip, uh, try to put something down in there. Let me see if I can get a little closer so you can take a look. We'll see what I'm saying. It's like a little pocket that's open. I don't know why it's open on the transmission, but that's from the 2001 to 2003 X, uh, XIs. Their transmission is like that, and I think beyond 2003, they're, they're closed. So, uh, just let you know. The next thing um, I gotta take out is that, uh, see it there, that cylinder needs to come out. It looks like it's pressed in, kind of, sort of. I'm not sure exactly how it's put in there, but I need to put a new one in. And I think I'm just gonna like, yank it out, or pull it out and then clasp it together. So, that'll be the next thing. Hopefully I can get that in there right. I think it's positioned a certain way, but I don't, I don't know. I'll just try it. We'll see. Took off this bushing, if you can see it. Um, just to let you know, there's an arrow here. And you saw it, it was inside the car like this. It just easily comes out. You put a screwdriver in here, in the hole here. And just pull on it, it comes right out. Um, it goes in the car this way. There's an arrow here. Um, again, I'm looking underneath. This points to the front of the car. Um, so that's how it goes in and what happens is this notch here if you see the bracket the bracket lays across this notch that's why there's a notch there so the way I put it in was pretty easy um, I put this like these little slots in here that get captured by these teeth and the sheet metal I put that in first and then all I did was push on the side and it snapped right in no issues so don't try to Kill yourself. I mean, it's meant to compress. This is like a spring here, um, but the rubber is here. So if you can see this, if I squeeze this, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see how the rubber kind of flexes a little bit right there. Um, that's what it's meant to do. So it's meant to compress and stick right in. So I figure I'll let you know that those who are going to be struggling trying to get this thing in. Okay, as you can see, I took out the cross member. Uh, the the uh, transmission is still lowered on this end. Taking out this bushing here it was a not so fun. I'll tell you in a minute how I did that. Um, just wanna... Well, as you can see, um, the shifter, not the shifter, I'm sorry, the transmission case, the bushing that lies in there, I took that out. Um, the one on the right, of course, is the one that took out the brand new one even the center came out of this this one was so bad so um, what I did was to get this out is I pulled on this side it's like a flange this is all it's like a metal flange around here pull on this side took a chisel to here you can see that and I kept banging it at an angle up and I did it here did it along here, along here. And what you're doing is you're pulling it away from the housing, a less contact surface, and it starts to collapse in itself. And eventually I took a uh, pry bar to the outside flange here, and it just pops right out. So the next thing I'm gonna 
do is put the new one in. So um, that should be a lot of fun. But I have a, a trick to that. I just realized that I don't know the bolt may be too too big for that. I've got a half inch bolt to fit in here, but I don't think that's gonna work. So stay tuned. Um, I'll let you know and uh, what happens next. So what I did was to compress that bushing in. I have a picture of it as well. Um, I got uh, these from Home Depot. It's an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter uh, flange, floor, floor flange, the pipe mounts into. Then I got uh, some three eighths, not three eighths, half inch. Um, washers and I got a larger washer I think this is a three quarter inch washer that I got and this bolt here is a half inch by uh, I believe it's eight inches so I did the same thing on the other side put a larger washer two uh, half inch washers and the nut and I used both ends to basically uh, screw in using the nuts and compressing the, uh, the bushing in there uh, you'll probably see in the picture I used a chisel on one side because um, the cross, not the cross member, but the, I guess it is the cross member, that shaft or that housing has like a little dip in it, has a little space in it, so I put that, um, I put a chisel in there just to take up the space, that way it wasn't crooked going in, I mean I guess it would have worked, but that's not the best way to do it, so it went in there just fine, um, make sure that you grease up the whole thing all the way around it and you also grease the housing because it went in it only took like five minutes to stick it in there Wait, not that even not even that um, just screwing it in and then putting it greasing it it was real easy no problems at all and the tool for this the proper tool for this from BMW is like $400 uh, if you're gonna buy it brand new and, and it doesn't make sense to me especially when I do this every once in a while so uh, that was my solution to putting that bushing in, and it's already in, so i uh, move on to the next thing. Transmission's pushed back up. Um, I won't hook everything back up just yet, but um, this is much better than it was before. Um, uh, still don't like the fact that it fifth goes to there and third you gotta kinda feel I'm not used to that but it's it's it doesn't like there's some play but it wasn't like before it was a lot of play so that's much better than it was before that play is just nature of whatever this mechanism mechanism is uh, again this car has a lot of miles on it so that could be anything but that's good um, there, that's all good. So before it was a lot worse. So and it was just all over the place. So again, you can see the the metal piece in here move a little bit, but that's because it's got bushings and stuff. It's it's fine. Um, it's the I mean, put brand new bushings in it. So it's just how it is. Other than that, seems to be good. Let's go to reverse here. Let's reverse. It was just hard to get in. I just don't like that. That's probably what broke the racket in the first place. But again, no big deal. Okay, I want to talk about the flex disc. The proper way to install this. Um, there's a wrong way to put this in, but I'll show you the right way. Uh, a lot of times you're looking underneath the car like this. Flex disc is sitting here. And you're going to bolt up two metal flanges. They are triangular shape. There's a wrong way to put this in, but the correct way is to start off. is to find the arrows. I know if you can see the arrows here. 
this arrow pointing right and there will be an arrow pointing left and they're sequential that way they go left right left right so your metal flange what I would start off is it doesn't matter what part of the metal flange you put in the triangular shape again as I said make sure you mate the metal flange to where the arrow is pointing so if you're bolting up the flange you make sure your flange is connected to here where the arrow is pointing right into here and start with your first bolt and bolt that in that way you don't get confused and then match it up with the other holes if I flip this over and show you the triangle shape that I'm talking about with the flange gets put on I could pick any of these holes and that arrow should be pointing to the flange if I pick this one the arrow is pointing to the flange and it's the same thing for the other side as well if I go left here and I put my metal flange here then if I flip this over triangle shape say I pick this one and I go rotate it up still hitting the metal flange here so as long as you get that as long as you get the first bolt in the flange side the arrow has to be pointing to the flange side get the first bolt in you won't get confused because everything else will match up after that now, there's a wrong way of doing this I mean people put this in the opposite and what happens is once this becomes torqued see the spacing in here is very minimal the spacing in here is very thick so when it's torqued this begins to flex together and it jogs the drive shaft which is not good at all here you have a lot more if you look at it, it's very thick you have a lot more rubber here as torque is being applied so I just want to give you that little bit and that's basically it